Um, look, I'd like to uh, get some evidence uh, in relation to the greenhouse gas effect. Um, we often hear today the debate around renewables is all to do with climate change, and that's a tautology because the climate's always changed. But I still have issues around the greenhouse gas effect, and in particular how carbon dioxide heats up you know, the idea that an extra 100 parts per million of CO2 uh, effectively heats up the other million parts. So 100 parts per million is one part per 10,000. Right, so first law of thermodynamics, or the equivalent of third law of Newton's law of motion, for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. So assuming carbon dioxide, and it's not, but assuming it's the same weight as N2O2, how can one atom of CO2 heat up 10,000 other atoms of N2O2 through conduction, unless it itself is around somewhere between 10,000 degrees to do that? Thank you, Senator Rennick, for that uh, question. I think this is something we've, we covered actually three years ago when I went and visited you and uh, went through... Well, the... we didn't actually talk about this particular law. Yeah, so yeah. I don't have all that information yeah. at my fingertips and it might be something to come back to you on. Just very briefly, though, um, I've got to remember the, the way the different molecules in the atmosphere operate have different um, ability to absorb... Um, energy from... That's through radiation. Yep, and, CO2. Uh, yep. and so their ability to store different amounts of energy, just like you have different battery materials can store different amounts of energy, yep. so too can different molecules in the air. And, uh, and so um, greenhouse gas, gases are ones which, unfortunately, are very good at absorbing a large amount of energy, more so than other molecules. Yep. So Incoming when you have more outcomes. of that... Yep. you end up with more energy being caught in the system. When you have more energy in the system, it means that you end up with um, bigger changes so that uh, what you have is um, the ability for the, for the atmosphere to move more so that you end up with big differences. And as you would imagine with, um, with weather, changing in weather is that... Or, is that you'll have, as we've seen, uh, more cyclones, more um, weather events, and that's because there's more energy in the system. OK, so in regards to that, I'm glad you raised that. So that's the second law of thermodynamics, right? Second, um, so the height of the troposphere at the equator is 16 kilometres. So you talk about how there's more energy in the system. That's, that's evidenced by we see a hot air balloon, you put heat in it, it rises. So we know that the height of the troposphere at the equator is 16 kilometres, the height of the troposphere at the equator... Um, poles is six kilometres, we know that heat expands. So the idea that gas is a greenhouse is compared to CO2 is compared to a greenhouse, CO2 is a gas, a greenhouse is a solid, that doesn't stand up. Like the whole analogy of comparing a gas to a solid is wrong and is, is an oxymoronic statement in, in itself. So the greenhouse gas effect is actually a moronic statement. Uh, so Senator, with respect, there's um, some of the things you've put together there actually don't work in the way that you described. I, uh, it's um, something which I don't want to end up fumbling my way through and giving you a bad, bad answer. Can I take that on notice so that I can yeah. make sure I give you a clear sure. answer so that it's and, able to be clear? Yeah. And in regards to my first question, so given that N2 and O2 are transparent to radiation, how is it that the CO2 molecule heats the N2 and O2 if it's not through conduction? So if there's another process by which they get heated by uh, other than conduction... I it is about. other than conduction. So yeah. let's take that on notice so I can okay. give you a nice clear Cheers. one and um, make sure that you get a good understanding of that. Thank you very much. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.